I would like to do a brief uh, videos, video tutorial on uh, the buckling capabilities in, in CATIA. Let me remind you what buckling was. Uh, in your strength of material course or stress analysis course, you looked at a variety of different uh, beams with different boundary conditions. And uh, the objective was once the geometry of the beam and material properties given, you would like to find the, uh, the, the critical load which causes the, the beam to buckle. Uh, generally speaking, this is called the Euler buckling formula. And uh, uh, obviously, is the Young's modulus, I is the cross-sectional moment of inertia, and L is the effective length of the beam is uh, depend, depends on the boundary, uh, the, the boundary condition, the end condition of restraints. For example, for the case of simply supported beam, which uh, is, is this situation, the one here, uh, on the second one from the left, uh, the length of the beam is the effective length. On the other hand, if you're dealing with a, a, fixed, uh, a fixed free end, such as the one on the left, then the effective, effective length is uh, 2 to L. I want, to, I want to warn you that the Euler buckling formula is non-conservative. In other words, the estimate that you get based on this formula or on linear analysis uh, in CATIA, buckling analysis in CATIA, uh, may be well above the critical load that actually the structure may buckle. Okay, that's what non-conservative means. However, I just want to show you the process by which uh, this is carried out. I'm going to assume that the length of the beam uh, is uh, let's say 10 inches long, okay, 10 inches long, and the cross section one by one. Actually, uh, let me make it uh, 15 inches long and one by one inch cross section. Uh, I also want to point out to you that the buckling is critical, is extremely uh, uh, dangerous when you're dealing with uh, uh, compressive load in slender structures. Okay, thin wall structures or standard structures. Uh, buckling is not an issue when the, the structure is under uh, under tension. Okay, so uh, the, the the process behind buckling in CATIA is that first you do a linear static analysis. You do a static analysis. That's a must, and you can apply, for example, a load of one pound. Okay, do a static analysis. And then use this, this static analysis is used when it comes to calculating the buckling load. So let's go ahead and make our, mod, uh, our model. Uh, here is the Catilla uh, part file. So on a convenient plane, on this horizontal plane, I will sketch uh, a square, which is one by one. That's a cross section of the beam. Okay, one by one, one inch by one inch. Oh, those are the dimensions right there. This is one inch. And one inch. Okay. Exit. Pad it. Up to 20 minutes. Okay. Now, just a couple of other comments that I would like to make here. Number one, when you do buckling analysis, or later on in the next video that I'm going to do natural frequency calculation of, of, of beam, uh, try not to use any symmetry because symmetry may suppress certain buckling modes or certain natural modes uh, of vibration. Okay, uh, Buckling has nothing to do with vibration, but there are elements of it that looks very similar, but they have nothing to do with one another. Okay, let's apply... Uh, uh, material property to this. Uh, where is it? Right there. So uh, metal. Let's make this thing out of aluminum. Oh, sorry, out of steel. It really doesn't matter. Okay, if you, if you want to know what the Young's modulus of steel is, that's uh, default value in Catio because we're going to be plugging this thing into later on into uh, Euler buckling formula. It says 2.9 uh, 2.901, 29.01, 10 to the uh, 7 PSI. Okay, very good. Now, uh, we're done here. So let's go ahead and mesh this. All right. 
Uh, the first step is linear static analysis. This is why I chose that as default. So let me also change the size of these things. So maybe I'll make it uh, point, uh, I don't know, 0.3 inches. Oh, that's very, really, you can see that, that's very, really, very really small. Okay, so let me make it point, point 0.5. Very good. Okay, now let's look at our mesh. Just how uh, fine it is. There we are. You have to change the rendering if you want to see the edges of the, the element right there. This is my mesh. You see that? All right, and then deactivate it. Deactivate. Now, we are dealing with a situation where one end of the beam is fixed, which means clamped, and the, the other end is free. Okay, so I clamp this end. Okay, and the other end is clamped. Uh, the other end is free, as you can see. Good. Now, I will apply a dummy load of one pound on the top. So, uh, let's see now. Where is a uh, force? I'll apply a dummy force of one pound on the top face in the direction Z. So uh, this is zero and this is minus one. Okay, there we are. One pound dummy load on the top, and then we're gonna run it. There's nothing exciting here, but doing a static analysis is the first step in getting your uh, buckling uh, analysis done. And the main reason is that it needs the stiffness matrix to calculate the buckling load. Okay, good. Now, there's nothing exciting here. If I looked at this, this beam is going to compress. For example, there we are. You can see that. And you can animate it. Okay, you can see that it compresses. Very good. Excellent. Now, uh, okay, so let me deactivate this plot. I don't need it. Where is it? Uh, right here, deactivate it. Okay, now we're going to do buckling. Look, here you say insert on the top, you say insert, insert, not static, because we just did it. Not frequency, buckling is what you want. Insert a buckling case. You click on it, and then it asks you, what is the static analysis, what is the reference static analysis that you have done? Now, I've done a static analysis right here. That's why I need this thing, because it has to be selected, okay? So I select this, and I say okay, and then I go and run it as a buckling prop. Run it. Done. Okay, so let's see now. First of all, when it comes to buckling, the actual magnitude of the displacement or the stresses are totally meaningless. This is why this is dip. Totally meaningless because buckling is suddenly uh, a snapping of a structure, which means that it just doesn't make sense to plot the stress in it. Now, if you look at the deformation mode, this is, and you look at this. First of all, let me animate that for you. See that? There we are. So what this thing is, is the first buckling mode. If I double click on it, double click on this, on this plot, and say selection, choose the selection tab. Uh, sorry, not the select occurrence tab. Okay, so this gives you the multiplier for the different buckling loads. Only the first one is important. The rest of them are total nonsense because if the structure buckles like that, will not go to these other buckling load. Basically, it will collapse. Let's think about it like that. Okay. Now, this number that you see here, 22,126, if you multiply the one pound load that you apply by this number, you get the actual first buckling load in pound, critical buckling load. So let's remember, this was 22,126, and let's do some calculations now. Uh, let's go to, let me start the MathCAD program here because I wanted to calculate a bunch of numbers here. So uh, where's my MathCAD? MathCAD, uh, oh. right there. Uh, 
And let's plug in the information that we have from uh, uh, from the data we typed in. For Young's modulus, remember we use the default value 29.01, uh, 10, 10 to the 6 PSI, 10 to the 6 PSI. Good. And the, uh, the length of the beam if I'm not mistaken, it was 20 inches. Yeah. And uh, I is 1 over 12. It's a rectangular cross section, remember? EH cube. So it's going to be 1, 0, B times H is 1 to the power 3, BH cube. So effectively, I is 1 over 12. That's what it is. And then the, the buckling load According to uh, 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 according to the Euler formula, is equal to. There was a pi there. Let me see. There was a pi squared e i over l squared. So it's going to be pi squared times e times i divided by length squared. So let us look at the first critical, uh, the first uh, buckling load, P, which is the only important one. Okay, uh, this doesn't agree with uh, my uh, Katia calculation, so let's find out what it did. What we did. Uh, one thing I'm not sure, first of all, is the length of uh, uh, the length of uh, my bar. That I'm not sure. Let me go find out. Okay, so let me minimize this. Measure the length of this bar. I think it was 20, but I'm not 100% sure. Yep, 20 inches. That's correct. And then I'm going to look at the uh, the cross section was one inch by one inch that I'm sure of. Let's see. Yep. Measure that. One inch. Very good. Now I want to go and see actually what kind of a load I put up there. That I'm not sure. So let's go here. One pound, excellent. So why are these things different? Uh, e was 29, e to the 6, 10 to the 6, 30 million PSI. The length is 20 inches. Oh, wait a minute, what was the formula for the, what was the denominator? Length square, correct. Oh, sorry. Just look at, look at the, look at the thing on the left side. The effective length is 2 times L. So the effective length is actually uh, 40. Okay, that's why it's not matching. Let me move these things down here. Move it down here. So the effective length, L is equal to 2L. Very good. And this thing down here is the effective length, not L. Let me type it again. L E raised to the power two. This better be twenty-two thousand. Whoa, still not there. <laughs> uh, let's see. They don't quite match. It's uh, it's fifteen thousand. It's fifteen thousand. But the theory the uh, the theory predicts twenty-two thousand. So I want to know uh, what the discrepancy is about. So let's check the things again. Um, length is 20 inches. The effective length is 2L pi squared EI. Okay, so uh, this looks good, except that uh, uh, let's make sure there's no mistake here. Your I is 1 over 12 BH cubed, so of course 1 over 12. Your LE is 40. 
very good so uh, pi squared this is all good now uh, let's do a couple of things here uh, one is uh, let's see the distributed load is one pound on that face which is correct yeah let me go ahead and check my CATIA table because I'm not sure I think it was 22,000 buckling factor is uh, yeah 22,000 so the load that I put in there multiplied by 22,000 should be the first buckling there's a significant difference here and I wonder why would that be the case let's do the following let me go ahead and run this thing with uh, uh, with uh, uh, parabolic element and see what the effect is okay so uh, first let's do the static I think we can do the buckling it's uh, well yeah so let's go ahead and uh, uh, run it I want to see how much difference it has. Uh, okay, so uh, click on that, double click. Ah, there, you see, 14,000. So it made a big difference. When I ran it with linear element, the result was not very good, actually. It told me that the buckling load is 22,000. When I ran it with parabolic element, you get right on the dot, 14. 1900 which is right there okay we got to be careful now just a word of caution here this type of problem we rarely use it we, we usually don't do it with solid element we do it with beam element but we haven't covered beam elements yet so uh, uh, when I after after I do beam elements when I come back we can uh, we can try the same problem with that okay all right guys sorry for the screw up here uh, it, it just happened